Well, thank you. Thank you very much for being with us uh, today. Uh, we started a few minutes late because there are still people coming in, so we thought it would be nice to have as many uh, in the room as, uh, as possible. And let me also thank those who are following this whole event uh, on, on Twitter. What we're doing today, we are following up on this uh, pre-promise roundtable hosted in Turin in, in June, by the other, hosted by Italian Foreign Minister Giulio Terzi, which was uh, dedicated, was devoted to uh, diplomacy in the Twitter age. So our focus today will be on e-diplomacy's role in the world, its geopolitical implications, if you wish, and how this situation is changing the way governments, yes, diplomats, journalists, and the public communicate. Uh, I think we are obviously on the crest of a technology-driven uh, tide. Uh, I'm sure you all noticed the announcement by Newsweek on Friday that beginning with the 1st of January, they will only be published uh, uh, online. I think it's a true uh, uh, quantum leap in the world of media. Um, I would like to thank our panelists uh, today. Let me introduce them to you, though I'm sure you know them Ready. Uh, we have Alec, Alec Ross, uh, who is uh, the senior advisor to Secretary Clinton for innovation. And Alec uh, is truly guiding the efforts by the Department of State to maximize the potential of the uh, diplomacy in a very uh, uh, intelligent and very results oriented way, I would have that. David. Uh, David Ignatius, of course, the Washington Post's very influential opinion maker. And I think David, more than anybody, knows firsthand uh, how the effects of new technology impact on the world of traditional journalists, but also new uh, journalism, if you wish. We have Deborah, Deborah Seward. She's the head of the strategic communications at the United Nations in New York. And that is, I think you should know, a true multilateral hub of social uh, media. Maybe limited resources, but very effective results. And finally, uh, Ahmed, Ahmed Shihab Bendin, he's our moderator today. He is the host of Half Post Live, and he's a true proponent of uh, new journalism that integrates with the new uh, media. Now, before I give them the floor, uh, I've also been asked to say a few words, so you may some very brief remarks, just uh, three quick points on how we uh, diplomats, and there are a number of diplomats in the room, whom I would like to welcome, of course, today, how we diplomats are trying to adapt to this revolution, the social media uh, revolution, because what we're trying to do, I think, at the end of the day, is to bring foreign policy closer to the people, and the people closer to foreign policy. My first point, out of three, is that we need to listen more to be able to better communicate. And obviously, <coughs> listening is, I believe, key to what we call uh, digital diplomacy. We, diplomats, we need to listen and engage more because we want to be and to be seen as, but we want to be, first of all, more effective, more transparent, more efficient, and to be able to better respond quickly to the new emerging uh, challenges. One of the first things I did when I moved to Washington as ambassador from Brussels was, of course, to open my, my Twitter account, which is only natural. And frankly, I see that as a way that enormously facilitates my work, because it allows me to engage the public and to hear the views and the priorities of the general public in a more direct and efficient uh, way. Um, we are now working a lot towards 2013, towards next year. Next year will be the year of Italian culture in the United States. So do expect uh, on Twitter, on uh, other media, a lot of focus from the embassy on this very important initiative. We will be doing many activities, uh, uh, conferences, uh, concerts, exhibitions, all over the US and throughout the year. Today, we are actually launching our new social media hub, just behind me. 
on our website. And what is this? Well, this is a snapshot of what we do uh, on uh, uh, the social media side. And I hope that it can help everybody to have better access and to communicate more and better with Italy and about Italy. So that's my first point, uh, to be able to listen more to act and operate more effectively. My second point is that I believe we are truly witnessing a redistribution of the power. We have, of course, great new tools at our disposal, but frankly, I don't think we should confuse e-diplomacy with those new technical tools. I think it goes well beyond that. Obviously, Twitter, Facebook uh, did put e-diplomacy on the map, but the real engines are not just those tools. The real engines, the real engines, the real changes are new ideas, innovation, uh, learning to work with the players in the field and actors actually outside the traditional diplomatic uh, channels. So I think it's true that uh, through technology we are witnessing a redistribution of power, as I just mentioned. And this redistribution of power is actually drawing new subjects, new actors into the traditional diplomatic arena. I think it is Anne-Marie Slaughter who called it a pivot, and actually uh, not a pivot to Asia, but a pivot to the people. And I think she is absolutely uh, right. So it's a much more interconnected world we live in it, and in it, everyone can contribute, and actually does contribute, to the developments of diplomacy and what we saw in the Arab awakening, I think, was the case in point. So that's my second point. We are witnessing a redistribution of power. My third and final point has to do with the theme of today, which is integrating traditional diplomacy and e-diplomacy. And I do believe that the State Department, under Hillary Clinton, and with Alex has truly facilitated a full integration of e-diplomacy programs with traditional diplomacy. Um, Italy is also very active in this field. Uh, we have uh, fully engaged with uh, the social media activities. I mentioned to you the uh, Twitter accounts and the other things that we are doing. Uh, we have a very wide network of embassies and consulates. We have about 130 embassies and 130 consulates, full-fledged consulates around the world which makes for one of the widest diplomatic networks, well, it is more and more being um, uh, inserted into the social media world. We are also doing much more training uh, at the Home Office in the Foreign Ministry in Rome of diplomats and foreign service officials in the use of social media. And frankly, I think the roundtable we did in Turin in June and the one we're having today um, is a clear proof of our engagement in uh, diplomacy. And the main objective, here I will stop and I will go back to what I said at the very beginning, the main objective is once again to bring foreign <coughs> policy closer to the general public and the people closer to the foreign uh, policy and then therefore to bring their ideas, your ideas, uh, closer to us. So I will stop right here. Welcome once again. Enjoy our discussion uh, today and Ahmed, over to you.